So, of course, guys, after the 2023 Bahrain Grand Prix, Aston Martin were really the stars of the show. Of course, Red Bull dominated the weekend, but Aston Martin were such a surprise, not just in pre-season testing, but in the first Grand Prix, showing that they were legitimately one of the front-running teams and could legitimately beat Ferrari, Mercedes, fair and square in the race, which, of course, is what they did with Fernando Alonso. And they are, for sure, contenders for the, say, front two, three, four positions in the Constructors' Championship. There is no doubt about that, and it's going to be a very exciting season, of course, with them up there in that part of the field. But how did they get, you know, into this position? Because if we go back to a year ago, they were maybe not the worst team on the grid, but they were very close to being the worst team on the grid. It was really them and Williams who were the two worst teams at the very start of uh, 2022. Of course, Sebastian Vettel, their main number one driver last season, him missing the first two races really did not help uh, with their you know start in Bahrain and then in Saudi Arabia. But even when he came into the car in Australia, had an embarrassing weekend, which was nothing really to do with him. It's because the Aston Martin car was just horrendous uh, grip-wise and, as we saw last season as well, was very uh, much, you know, not pulling great speed in the speed traps and was just all around pretty slow. They did, though, before they really started to bring a ton of upgrades to the car, they did start to improve on the initial Aston Martin car that we saw in Bahrain at the start of 2022. And if we go to how their performance was on pure pace at the last Grand Prix before the Spanish Grand Prix of 2022, where they brought a completely new car, basically, this is how they compared to Max Verstappen and Red Bull, who, of course, won the Miami Grand Prix. Lance Stroll, with his best lap in qualifying, was only 1.2 seconds slower than the best lap overall in qualifying, uh, of course, done by Charles Leclerc, who was on pole position in Miami. And then with Stroll and Vettel both starting from the pit lane because of, I think, issues with the fuel for Aston Martin. I can't remember exactly what the issue was, but... Yeah, they both had to start from the pit lane, obviously come back through the field. But on average, they were two seconds a lap slower than Red Bull, who, of course, were in Miami, I'd say probably the quickest team that uh, race that weekend. And on average, really, it was about two seconds per lap they were losing to Red Bull during almost every race in 2022. But... Compared to how they started in Bahrain, where they were much further off pole position and their race pace was even worse than it was in Miami, they did pretty well to come back to the position they were in by this time in the season. And then, of course, we got to the Spanish Grand Prix, where again, they uh, brought a, almost a completely new car. And the biggest area to really see just how much of a difference the you know, new design was compared to what they previously had can be seen here. So obviously this is the side pod of the Aston Martin car before the Spanish Grand Prix of 2022. And then at the Spanish Grand Prix, you have this side pod. And this side pod very much in its design inspired by the Red Bull car um, who have, you know, pioneered, Adrian Newey pioneered, uh, that design with these regulations. And of course, Aston Martin, having hired Dan Fallows, who used to work alongside Adrian at Red Bull in the technical department, with him now at this time in 2022, having started and already having influence in the technical department of Aston Martin, already had the Aston Martin team on this um, design concept that, I think by now, most people would agree, is the best side pod and design concept for these particular regulations. But at this point, even though they brought such a, you know, new car compared to what we saw in the first five races of 2022, their pace didn't really improve straight away 
uh, with this new car being brought, as you can see here. Because in the Spanish Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel was 2.2 seconds off of pole position. The pole position uh, time being set by Charles Leclerc. And then Max Verstappen, who of course won the Spanish Grand Prix last year, was on average about 2.1 seconds quicker than Vettel. So when compared to Miami, Aston Martin were actually slower and they weren't really optimizing and getting the best out of this new design. And I think really the reason that is, and it's a logical reason really, is because of course they started 2022 with a design uh, that the previous technical guys, um, you know, had. And then once they brought in Dan Fellows and a few other people, I think from Red Bull um, as well, and some newer people they hired, I think in the back end of uh, 2021, once they started to have their influence on the design of the Aston Martin, these two design concepts that were going on at Aston Martin, again, before the Spanish Grand Prix and then after the Spanish Grand Prix, Obviously, we're having to now mesh, and it wasn't really making for a great car because after the Spanish Grand Prix, Aston Martin wouldn't really see an uptick in performance. Vettel would score some points in Monaco, Baku, and Canada. In Baku, uh, finished in sixth place very impressively for Aston Martin. But one thing we did see especially was the Aston Martin team struggling a lot with pace in qualifying. I remember in Canada, they had both cars knocked down Q1. I think Silverstone, the British Grand Prix, they had both cars, I think, knocked down Q1 there. Um, I remember in Austria, the Red Bull Ring, they were very slow. Um, but there was potential in the car. They just weren't really able to find it. And as we got to pretty much, uh, well, not quite the summer break, but just before the summer break, Again, Aston Martin, they hadn't really found um, any improvements yet with this new type of design because Lance Stroll, who was the highest placed Aston Martin in the race at the French Grand Prix, was 2.4 seconds off pole position, pole position set by Charles Leclerc that weekend. The race pace was a bit better, you know, under two seconds per lap on average, they were losing to Verstappen, who won uh, the race that uh, weekend but again they weren't really closing the gap in a way that you would have expected given how many upgrades went onto the car from the start of the season up until this point of the season and in the midfield as well they you know compared to the two top midfield teams last season of Alpine and McLaren they hadn't really made massive gains on those two teams occasionally they would race them but they weren't racing them on a regular basis. It was really Alpine versus McLaren, and maybe occasionally Aston Martin would nick a point or two. But yeah, they weren't really able to do it on a consistent basis. But after the summer break, we saw Aston Martin improve a bit more. Um, they had, I think, an eighth place finish with Sebastian Vettel at the Belgian Grand Prix, I remember. Also, Lance Stroll was very quick in the Aston Martin at the Dutch Grand Prix, and they followed this up as well in Singapore with uh, a good, really good double points finish there. Um, and towards the end of the season, Aston Martin had definitely improved their car a bit more with even further upgrades to the car of 2022. Because if we go to the data from the US Grand Prix, uh, the gap to pole position between it was actually Lance Stroll, who was the quickest Aston Martin, compared to Carlos Sainz, who was on pole position. The gap was 1.2 seconds. And then Sebastian Vettel, who finished in the points for Aston Martin with Stroll retiring from the race after a big crash with uh, his now current teammate Alonso, was losing on average 1.7 seconds per lap to Max Verstappen. So you can clearly see from what we saw um, Spanish Grand Prix, French Grand Prix, you can clearly see there was an improvement, you know, during the season. Um, definitely a bit slower, the improvement, than I think Aston Martin expected and probably we expected as well. But there definitely was, by the end of the season, quite an improvement from the Aston Martin team. And then at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, of course, the final race of the season, 
Um, Sebastian Vettel was only 1.1 seconds off pole position and pole position and the race win was secured by Max Verstappen and Vettel on average during the race was only 1.3 seconds per lap slower than Max. So you can see, you know, at the start of the season, they were, what, a couple seconds a lap off the pace in the race and, at, you know, some qualifying sessions, in fact, plenty of qualifying sessions in the first half of the season, they were at best two seconds a lap off pole by the end of the season they had you know brought that gap down by quite a bit and going into the 2023 uh formula one season i think we all knew that aston martin were going to improve um they were always likely to be the most improved team because of just how poor they were at the start of 2022 and for Dan Fallows, this would be his first proper full Aston Martin car. And yeah, of course, he has done an absolutely brilliant job with the Aston Martin as at the start of 2023, he has designed a car that is legitimately one of the top two or three best cars on the grid. It can legitimately fight for podiums and I think later in the season race wins as well. And straight out of the blocks has been a brilliant car. And from what they've been saying, Aston Martin, looks as though with how they're going to develop the car, they're going to be right up there really throughout the season. And hopefully in positions like this, where they're racing Mercedes and even Ferrari and maybe Red Bull in some exciting races later in the season. But to further show you just how the development has gone in the last year with Aston Martin, because, again, if I go back to this picture, which, again, was the side pod, uh, the new design on the side pod from the Spanish Grand Prix last year on, you can now see how it's evolved to this point, because this is now the side pod on the Aston Martin, which has been coined as a water slide. It definitely is a very interesting-looking side pod, uh, but, yeah, clearly is giving them good amounts of downforce. It is similar in certain ways to the Red Bull car, of course. We do have to remember Mercedes do supply them quite a lot of parts as well. So it is not just a green Red Bull. But yeah, um, obviously hiring Dan Fallows, who worked at Red Bull, and probably, you'd have to imagine, already knew what Red Bull's design plan was for the 2022 regulations, of course, has... Uh, pulled off a brilliant job in designing a car for Aston Martin as best as he can from obviously what he remembered from Red Bull. And I know some people may say, well, it's not exactly great, is it, that the Aston Martin is in certain areas basically a copy of the Red Bull and it is, you know, Aston Martin have definitely benefited quite a bit from having uh, Dan Fallows as their uh, technical director and having him having knowledge i guess of you know what red bull's uh design really was going into the 2022 regulations but again it is not exactly the same to the red bull car there are differences and again uh, one thing i think i mentioned a few days ago maybe was that adrian newey you know as a designer is on a completely different level to people like Dan Fallows. So even if Dan Fallows implements a concept like this with another car, doesn't mean necessarily it's going to be exactly like the Red Bull one. So, you know, Adrian Newey, when it comes to designing these cars and this type of side pod, which is clearly proven the Red Bull-like side pod to be the best side pod concept just because people are copying it doesn't mean they can make one as good and design one as good as the true master being adrian newey but let's get into some data with aston martin regarding the first grand prix weekend and just to show really the improvement compared to a lot of the data i showed from 2022 so of course, in qualifying, you had a Red Bull front row, Ferrari second row, and Alonso in fifth. And Alonso was only six tenths of a second off pole position. Uh, yeah, there was, I don't think, any moment in 2022 where that was 
the case. Um, and you have to remember as well, Bahrain, in terms of a track layout, probably not the best track for this Aston Martin car. Um, I think definitely the higher downforce tracks and definitely circuits with slower corners are going to help the Aston Martin car more than circuits like the uh, Sackett International Circuit. For, so for them to only be six tenths of a second off around a track that doesn't really suit them that much is pretty good. And it shows that they are definitely um, on some good pace and definitely have strong pace, I think, for really the entire season. Of course, there are going to be certain circuits where they are weaker, certain tracks where they're stronger. But for them to still be not too far behind, even, say, Ferrari, who, um, you know, were what? Uh, just over three tenths of a second quicker around a circuit where in qualifying trim at least Ferrari should have been probably much quicker than Aston Martin um, is pretty good of course Leclerc could have done a final lap in qualifying I get that but still Aston Martin's pace I think was really pretty good and if we then get into the race pace you can see even more just the gain Aston Martin have made not necessarily compared to red bull again red bull they're off on their own uh planet at the moment and again even if um or even as much as aston martin may copy and other teams may copy the red bull design red bull are still in a class of one with the design and the car they have uh, so it's going to take something monumental to close that gap and these average lap times in the bahrain grand prix is the average lap times of Verstappen, Leclerc, Alonso and Hamilton up until Charles Leclerc's retirement, um, which I think was on, I think, was it lap 40, lap 41, something like that. It was on the early 40s, I think it was. Yeah, Verstappen and Red Bull much faster than everyone else and seven tenths of a second clear of Charles Leclerc on average. Alonso and the Aston Martin was a tad quicker than Hamilton. And if you actually compare the Aston Martin to the Mercedes in terms of the average lap times during the Bahrain Grand Prix for the entire race, I think the Aston Martin was uh, more than just a tenth of a second quicker than the Mercedes. So Aston Martin are clearly faster than Mercedes. There is no doubt about that at the moment. And Ferrari, of course, on average were uh, to that point, uh, what, three tenths of a second quicker than Alonso. Very important to remember, though, that, of course, Alonso had a bit of a poor start, losing a couple positions, was hit by Lance Stroll, and Leclerc in the Bahrain Grand Prix had a lot more clean air in front of him than Alonso had, because Alonso had to overtake the two Mercedes, uh, Bottas at one point, and again, with the contact with Stroll, so I'm sure Alonso could have lapped even stronger on average of his lap times up until Leclerc's retirement. So the Aston Martin car, without doubt, very, very quick. And obviously, Alonso finishing third was helped by Leclerc's retirement. But yeah, the Aston Martin, I think, was probably... Even though if you do the raw calculations, I think the Ferrari was quicker over the course of the entire Grand Prix, probably. But I think the Aston Martin car was probably in clean air for all four teams, all four of the top teams, that the Aston Martin car was probably faster than the Ferrari and the Mercedes for, you know, the majority of the 57 laps and yeah Alonso I think despite Leclerc's retirement I think he definitely deserved uh the podium for you know the hard work that he put in into that race to get onto the or to get past you know the cars that he overtook um but going forward after this point now we've seen a clear display of Aston Martin's true pace how good can they be this season and if they're going to win races where could they win races well Let's get into the sector times from qualifying in Bahrain because it does already paint a picture as to where certain teams are strong uh, or stronger and weaker. And if you look at Aston Martin, as expected, really because they've got a Mercedes power unit, which is not pulling as much power as the Red Bull powertrain cars and the Ferrari powered cars, Aston Martin this season are going to struggle a bit more 
at circuits that are you know more high speed such as spa monza the next track we're going to at jeddah even melbourne to a certain extent but when we go to circuits like monaco uh, the circuit de catalonia and barcelona uh, hungary circuits like that that aston martin car is going to come alive because you can see here in the middle sector in bahrain which is quite a bit slower and is really full of the corners at that circuit. He, uh, Alonso was quicker than Hamilton in the Mercedes. Leclerc was quicker in the Ferrari compared to Alonso, but we did see in the race that compared to Sainz, Alonso was so much quicker than that Ferrari in the middle sector, uh, gaining so much time into the braking zones of the slow corners, on the exits of the slow corners. The Aston Martin was very quick. so. Yeah, when we get to circuits where there are quite a few slow and medium speed corners and there's not too many stretches of full throttle um, application, Aston Martin are going to be very competitive at circuits like those. And I think Alonso in this car can absolutely win a race this season. And I think once we get to circuits like Monaco, um, and again, the circuit of Catalonia and Barcelona, of course, that's his home Grand Prix. I think you'll see Aston Martin certainly stunningly quick. But let me know, guys, down below, for Aston Martin going forward for the rest of this season, what do you think they're capable of? Do you think they can finish in the top three of the Constructors' Championship or potentially even in second place? And do you think they can win a race in 2023? If you do think so, let me know. If you think they'll win more than one, let me know what you know circuits you think they can win at. Um, I think they will win a race this season. Just don't know where exactly uh, that will be yet. Again, Monaco, Singapore maybe. Uh, tracks like that you'd have to think as likely candidates. But let me know your thoughts on what their true potential is for the 2023 Formula 1 season. Until next time, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.